only midway through that did I realise that I was fitting out somebody else's building. I should start to try and buy something. Right. Hello, I'm Jess. I'm Adam. And we're ForTheLandlords.com. We help landlords and property investors get more money, less hassle, and their time back. We do indeed. Mm. Right, so today, I'm going to be interviewing Jess about his property journey. <laughs> that, got, that quickly turned, didn't it? Yeah. Nice intro. Yeah. It's all about me today. That's right? it. Yeah. Well, this is something that a few people have been saying. You know, we'd like to know a bit more about you personally. Nice I'm, thing to I'm do. I'm up for this. I'm um, um, it, so it, it got asked enough times that yeah. I relented. We'll go from his first investment to his worst investment, maybe. Why property and why he's got no plans to slow down. So let's dive right in. Adam's not showing me this. He's giving me a, uh -huh. a sneaky few little things, but there's, there's definitely going to be some surprises in there, aren't there? Mm. Okay. I'm a little bit nervous. So, new location today? Yeah, yeah. Yep, nice. We're in my house. Yep. We're out of the office. No one's here, so... Unless the doorbell rings. Unless the doorbell rings. No interruptions. Right. So, let's jump right in. Mm, okay. Jess's property journey. So... Start at the beginning, right? Yeah. How old were you when you bought your first buy to let and when was it? What year? Not give your age away oh, a bit, Jesus. but. Yeah. <laughs> so mid, mid 2000s, can't remember the exact year. It wasn't a buy to let. My first property, we used to have, uh, run a, um, a, a retail business, sandwich and coffee shops. We had some of the first Costa coffee shops in the country before mm. they were owned by Whitbread. It wasn't a franchise, you just. That coffee's not as good. No, well, it's not bad, it's not bad. But you, you just bought the coffee beans and um, yeah, you said, it sounds fancy. So oh, I had some of the first Costa coffee shops, yeah. but basically. You bought just, their beans wholesale for them. Basically, yeah, yeah. and then you got to stick the sign up. But uh, yeah, before, before Costa coffees, before Subways, before that. So we had a business that was running well and we started to buy some of the. Okay. Um, uh, the, the properties. So you bought a, a commercial premises then? The first, your first thing. ever property deal that I ever did was a lease option to buy on a renovation <laughs> commercial where, where I split the titles and put a flat upstairs. Okay. That's no joke. That's cool. Did, did it without knowing that's what it was. It took a, it took a long time because it, it didn't have to take, you know, the, the difference between buying it and getting it to split and all those things was about three years. But we okay. traded downstairs. So that kind of um, answers my second question, which yeah. was going to be, what were you doing per professionally at the time? Were you were yeah. self-employed, running your own shop? Yeah, I've never had a job. And the next bit was going to be, what, what made you buy a rental property? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, well did, you kind of did it by accident in a way. You put the flat upstairs. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was. Well, it, did you live in that flat yeah. initially? Yeah, I'd still yeah. live there today if I... Um, if yeah. I <laughs> didn't, didn't have a wife. Have a wife, <laughs> wife and kids, yeah. yeah. I, I was drawn to the bricks and mortar of it. I like building stuff. So all the shops... I like the process of you know finding the location, building it, growing the business inside mm -hmm. it. But actually, I got addicted to the shop fitting. You're like, yeah, finding the location, stripping it out, fitting the shop. Um, I was, I was when I was, I was in my, I started in my teens and, and in my early twenties. Uh, only midway through that did I realise that I was fitting out somebody else's building. I should start to try and buy some of them. So we've, I've still, I still own some of those buildings. Okay, so yeah. actually, that also flows nice into the next point. Mm. What? point did you go all in as a landlord then mm. so you had a few sandwich shops coffee shops yeah i know you don't have any of them anymore yeah so what made you go all in as a landlord mm. it's a bit of a longer story because it okay. one thing tapers off and the other thing brings in that sandwich and coffee shop chain it grew, we grew it grew it to a, a small chain it was quite successful at, at, at one point um you know like before Subway and Tesco's Express and even before Starbucks came, you mm -hmm. know, those kind of things. Um, so we did quite well at that point. I bought some of the shops. I could, I, I liked the you know, buying a house, doing it up, or the, mm -hmm. buying a property, doing it up, the bricks and mortar. Um, I got to know a little bit. I'm, you know, in my early 20s, I knew nothing about plumbing or electrics or, you know, and I was stupid enough to give most things a go. So I remember trying to build a brick wall with my dad, you know, so kicked it down off, I think. <laughs> but, anyway, but you know it, it, it taught you various stuff you know and, and yeah we, we did, did the drains we did those things so so what the, the business the, the the training business the sandwich and coffee shops gradually slowed down 2008 was probably the point where it really kind mm, okay of, you know our, our, our takings in some of the shops I'll give you an example we used to do two grand a day on, on some of them uh, and they went down to sort of 200 pounds a day at some points. Right. I mean, we didn't let it. We had to go and find other business and do outside catering and all sorts of stuff. But it became really hard work. Sometime before that, 
it was you know it was gradually getting harder. Two thousand eight was like an off a cliff. By two thousand eight, had you already started buying? That's why one buy to lets then, yeah. So, so properties sloped off, and then in two thousand and six, I was starting to think, yeah, you know, maybe we'll sell some sandwich and coffee shops off. Actually, that, at that time, I was still searching for the right recipe. Um, the, the right business model. I don't mean the right food in the sandwich. I mean the right business model. You know, we were trying to open uh, a bistro that was open early in the morning, went through to late, extended the opening hours to make it profitable, trying to find the right business model to make it work. Could never found that. At the same, same time, selling some off. And then, yeah, exactly that. Buying some more houses. You asked when is the click. I Yeah, when you went all in as a landlord. In, all in. I'm not um, doing this anymore. I'm just doing it was a, it, buy to let. I can't remember the exact year, but it was a Christmas. A mate of mine gave me a book. It was a rubbish book. I won't even name it. It's rubbish. There's plenty of other books. Just read any book about property investing and it'd be better than this book. But it told you about the idea of uh, finding a house, fixing it up, renting it out, getting some kind of momentum by adding value, however you did it. As well, soon as I read refinancing that. Refinancing it. And refinancing it out. Just the way, the, the classic way of growing a property portfolio. I read that. A friend named me the book. I read it in two days. Um, spelling mistakes and all. And loads of bad advice. It's just really Did you write it? Spell yeah, mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't make any sort of mistakes. Uh, Bill Gates or someone <laughs> with a little blue line. And yeah, I literally, li- no word of lie, put the book down, picked the phone up to my bank manager and said that that property, the first one actually, the first one we ever bought where we did the shop up, can, you know, we owned it. We paid it off by then. We haven't quite paid it off by then. There was some equity in it. I remember releasing two hundred thousand pounds. That we, we can't pay it off, otherwise we'd release mm. more. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll released about two hundred thousand pounds, exactly two hundred thousand pounds, and that was it. Started buying. Right. That, that was it. It was it was a flick of a switch. That looks a good idea. I was. And from I, that point, you've always bought, re, uh, renovated it, and then mm. refinanced it. Right. That's yeah. always been your model, and still is now. Yeah. The reason it flicks a quick was. I was getting peed off with the property, with, with the, the sandwich and coffee shops. Mm-hmm. It, they weren't working the way I wanted them to do. The, re, the, the dawning realisation was, this isn't going to... You know, when I first started, it was going to be... We were going to take over the world. I remember reading the... Um, it's called Grinding It Out. It's, it's Ray... I think Ray Kroc did actually buy it. Uh, right, it. It's the, um, the guy who started McDonald's. Oh, yeah. I read yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, I can beat him. I can beat him. I can, I can take over the world. I can beat him. Well, and then Tesco started doing three quid meal deals. Oh, yeah, in my eight, eight, 18, 19 <laughs> years old, it's like, oh, this, this, this is what I can do. I can, I can open hundreds of those. Greg's, Baker's Oven, all those, because that was kind of the parallel. They're bigger than McDonald's in this country. I thought, well, that's the model. We can do it. Yeah, it came to the realisation it, it wasn't going to happen. We didn't have the right business model. I wasn't very good at it, very honest. Now, looking back, didn't have a, um, a compelling proposition. Uh, but I your thought, properties, your rental properties... We're bringing in an income every month. Properties. And you weren't having to go there and open the door and yeah. spend yeah. 100 grand on a kitchen and all that. Correct. When 2008 came, not only did it feel like that's a nice, reliable business model that I should put my money into, it also felt like, well, I'd spent over a decade putting time and effort into a business. It was a sandwich shop, a coffee shop in my situation, but it could be, it could be a job. It could mm. be any other business year, but it, it, it was fickle, you know. <laughs> I hear it all the time now from, from landlords that we speak to, clients. I'm in a position, whether they're in a job or running a business, that's not doing it for them. Whatever they're, whatever it is that they want it to do, it's not working for them. And um, I was in that position. But then to know that it, it's that fickle, that in 2008, it just stopped. The taps turned off. It was, it, was, it was really disheartening. It was like all my effort that I put in for the last 10 years into something. Because we, we didn't take much money out of the sandwich and coffee shops. It was always build the next one, build the next one, build the next one. I like the idea of building stuff. Um, it had all gone into building something that then collapsed. I can't, you know, I can't, don't, don't, don't feel too sorry for it. We got out of it with, with some with some equity and that went into the properties. So, you know, so it wasn't a disaster, but it definitely felt... Do you think thickened. then there's something in your mindset that gives you the ability to turn problems into opportunities, maybe? For the people that don't have them?